Hello and welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and we have joining us Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. Today we are featuring swallows, spiders and some other interesting creatures. But before we get started we wanted to show you a baby blue jay that our staff member Allison found in her backyard. You can tell it's a baby because of all that gray down on the back and head. You can see it started to grow its adult feathers but it hasn't finished yet and so it looks somewhat scruffy. This bird is probably a fledgling that has left the nest. It will remain in the vicinity of the nest for a few days before finally moving off on its own. And we think it's very cute. And here is another baby. It's a nuthatch found in our tree. You might remember in a previous episode that we talked about nuthatches. So this is a little guy, uh, not too old. But older than a blue jay, because you can see that most of the adult feathers are there. You can't really see any regions of downy fluff like there was on the blue jay. Can we tell yet if it's male or female? Uh, it's hard to say. The females will have a kind of lighter shade of black on their crest and mask, and the males are darker, although at this stage the entire bird is kind of fluffy, and so you can't really see the contrast between the black on the head and the blue on the back. Looks like though it's starting to find food for itself. Although we saw one of the parents bring it food from a bird feeder, so it's still getting some assistance. As we mentioned, we're going to feature swallows this week, and here is a tree swallow that we saw at Big Lake. It's just kind of sitting here, hanging out on this sign, and it's preening itself, doing a little dance. And also yawning, apparently. There's a reason why we filmed this swallow sitting down rather than flying. It's absolutely impossible to try and get swallows on film when they're flying. They're very, very fast. You can see that they've got very long pointed wings and they make a sort of sickle shape in the air. We also saw a barn swallow at Big Lake. First it was sitting on a railing and then it moved to one of the bulrushes. Swallows actually have a very sort of metallic sounding song. And sometimes when they perch, then they'll sit there and sing quite loudly. And this particular swallow has a lot to say. Sorry about all the wind that you're hearing in this recording. It was so windy at Big Lake, but we really wanted you to be able to hear the swallow. And you can see its throat moving when it's singing. Another thing you can see on this bird is the very, very long forked tail. Unlike the tree swallow, barn swallows have very long tails. And if you can see this feature, it's definitely a barn swallow. You can see how wide its beak is opening and that's so that it can snap up bugs when it's flying and it eats mosquitoes, so we absolutely love them. Go barn swallows, woohoo! You might have heard this bird in the background of the swallow videos. It is a red-winged blackbird and it was also at Big Lake and it was also sitting on the railing and again it looks like it's preening itself. Yep, you can see that this is a male because it's got those really bright red shoulder patches on it and it's also black. The females are kind of brown and streaky like a sparrow. The female red-winged blackbirds are breeding right now, so this male is likely keeping an eye out for predators. We saw a crow attack a nest, so there's definitely some in the area. Before we talk about spiders, we thought we'd show you this chipmunk. This one was down by the creek, and they like to hang out down there because people are leaving sunflower seeds for them. And they seem to like to hang out around a pile of tree stumps. The spiders were feeling left out from last week's episode, so we decided to show you some this week. This is a jumping spider. We talked about the zebra jumping spider in a previous episode, but this is a different kind. You can see it's got these very contrasting brown and white markings on it. It seems to be looking at something in front of it, and uh-oh, there's another spider, and it's doing some sort of display posture. It had both its forelegs spread out straight. What's going to happen next? Now the second spider has joined the first one on the leaf, and they're both displaying at each other. Oh no! And one just got chased away. It left the leaf. And this is the winner of the leaf. Besides jumping spiders, another kind of spider that's easy to recognize is a crab spider. The first two pairs of legs on a crab spider are very long and curved, kind of like a crab. This one is quite pale and it was hanging out on a raised bed. But this one is a totally different color. This is a ground crab spider. And you can see they're pretty shy spiders. It's running away from my finger. This crab spider wasn't quite as shy as the other one. This is a goldenrod crab spider. And thank you to Anthea, one of our staff members, for sending us this footage. This kind of spider likes to hang out in flowers. 
where it grabs insects that come to pollinate the flowers. You can see that there's also a beetle in the flower as well, but it doesn't seem to be bothering it. Goldenrod crab spiders can change color, but they can't change to pink. They can change to white and yellow though. Here's one that is white and also kind of translucent. And here's one that is yellow. It's kind of difficult to see because it blends in so well to the color of the marigold. Can you see it? It's in the center. How about now? When frightened, crab spiders sometimes put up their two front legs in a kind of threat display posture. That's what this one's doing. Apparently it didn't like having its photo taken. Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature. The weather is beautiful outside and we hope you get a chance to go out and enjoy it. See you next week.